Oh, we've got championship week beginning right now. We got to get you ready for those title games, big matchups, a tough Thursday night game to break down, and a whole lot more, including your questions on today's show. Make sure you click subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. The fantasy footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway, back with you. Al Borland, Papa Josh, and Deucer's Alley this morning, Wednesday episode of the show. Happy to have you with us. Championship week. It's in the air. You can feel it. It's electric. The tension. Yeah. The anticipation. Yeah. The fear. The stress. <laughs> uh, we have. This is for fun, right? <laughs> uh, how much stress do you have right now, Jay? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty carefree cause the two that I'm in, I don't give two yeah, farts. You're about. sleeping like a baby. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it really, it really does show like. You've had a, you've probably extended your lifespan. Yeah. At least a week. Wow. So we did get news this morning. Just breaking news that Tyra Taylor is going to start for the Giants. Yeah. Just, just seeing that live. Um, and Jacoby Brissett's going to start for the Manders. Ooh, that's new information for me. It was um it was humorous because yesterday when when the news is going you know the news feed from various resources we got one on our site it's like it was just a bunch of coaches that didn't know which quarterback they're gonna play Minnesota didn't know the Commanders don't know we don't know about Stroud we don't know about Lawrence we don't know about Tyrod and Devito is well yeah we know I, about Devito now hey, we do that was a great run oh for Tommy yeah D? yeah good work Cutlets. I hope you got your cash anywhere you possibly could. Yeah, I mean. He, he looked like he was having a good time, and that's what you got to do because at any moment, at any particular halftime, it could be gone. It is funny how quickly those things evaporate. The I, I posted a, a tweet yesterday, a poll over on X. Now, don't, don't go look because I'm going to quiz oh, you. I'm okay. going to see what you think the answer was. So I missed the poll. Uh, I was talking about. Those of you out there that were on their way to the title game, and what do you think helped you the most along the way? And there are four choices. Oh, picking the right players. <laughs> uh, well, uh, one option was having a great draft. Okay. One option was great waiver wire pickups. Okay. One option was great trades. Mm -hmm. And then one option was great start-sit decisions. Mm. I know what order it should be in. All right, let's hear what you believe the order should be. I think it would be draft waivers for sure as the as, as the top and second, two and then start sit third and trades four. Okay, Mike, I'll, do you have I'll any go, theories? I will go waivers at the top because we had we, we had, had some Puka, Kyron we had some monsters yeah. this year where if you went on if you went Remember in on when Puka, I got Kyron and you had wanted to draft him but yeah, Kyle wouldn't let you yeah, do Kyle's it. Yeah, Kyle's like why would we draft Kyron Williams? I'm like, I because man, you don't. Is Cam Akers really the guy? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. You hold so, that against him even today? Uh, no, no. Okay, no. Right. You let it go. No, I not let it go. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Mike, you think waivers first? Yeah. All right. Well, the the answers as of right now, thirteen thousand votes. Forty percent voted having a great draft. Ah, uh, okay. That's so good. The foundation of your team. We That's talk excellent. about it every year. I mean, hopefully. Some of those 40% picked up the UDK, got them off to a good start. 37%. So very close. Great waiver wire pickups. Well, that is the majority of the vote. The 14% was great trades. For me, it was great trades that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, oh, my Great goodness. trade rejections. Oh, my goodness. I mean, <laughs> yesterday I spent the day taunting people with trades that I had yeah. offered that they rejected. That's a pro move. Oh, Which is man. just a good so, old time. Like, I'll just, I'll I mean, give Mike's you, been doing that with Pittman. I'll give you one. 
Um, this was, I mean, you, it's so crazy. This is perfect dun, example dun, of don't dun, veto dun, trades dun. <laughs> because you don't know what's going to happen. Andy offered me, and at the moment that this was offered, it wasn't even that close. No, no, you got, it was a quick rejection. But to think back only a few weeks ago and think of how insanely lopsided in my favor it would have been that you offered me, you were coming after Austin Eckler who has since that exact moment mm. collapsed. Mm. And in return for basically nothing that I gave away, <laughs> I would have received Kyron Williams, mm -hmm. a second-round pick, which is our golden goose in our mm. keeper league, mm. and Amari Cooper, mm -hmm. who, who at that time was a worthless – he had yeah. like hadn't scored five points in like three straight weeks. They had no quarterback. Yeah. I mean, it just seemed, and Kyron was injured and yeah, whatever. Yeah. Had I accepted that, I would be in the championship You'd be in game my right boat now. right now. Yeah. And you would be, oh my goodness, easy rejection. I also went back and looked at the, the famous betrayal trade with Papa Josh. He's in studio today and didn't realize in that trade, he would have also received Amari Cooper. Mm. Uh, so, but, but a lot of the trades that, you know, sometimes it's the ones that don't, that's why we say don't veto because you don't really know what the next few weeks are going to hold. I could see Trey. I, I, there are leagues that would have, had you taken that deal, the Kyron deal with Eckler, mm -hmm. there are leagues that would have vetoed that because they wouldn't have wanted Eckler going to a playoff contender or something. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that trade was lopsided in the opposite direction. So please, commissioners out there, it starts with you. Be wise. Do not veto trades for any reason other than collusion. Open collusion, veto, and boot those managers but otherwise let it fly we're all grown-ups so yeah and situations change every single week yeah every week i mean it, it it's it's actually really upsetting how bad our memories are and when you think about like amari cooper i mean he's just dominated with joe flacco but you you almost can't remember how bad it Ew, was yeah. Right before you had Flacco and you had the the quarterback quarterback roulette of yeah you know is it is he was it good DTR? with Wat he was better with Watson but then the second Watson went out for the year it was like I tried to trade him to everybody nobody wanted to yeah. touch him because the Cleveland Browns it was either it was PJ Walker and then they're like no it's not him and then it was DTR who they said even when they 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 picked up Joe Flacco and Joe Flacco got in on a game like no no DTR is still going to be our starter so. If you teams teams change, fantasy outputs change. It's it's a wild world this year. It is, and uh, we've got hungry for more on today's show. Some news to catch you up on. We'll preview a very honestly. I find it to be a um, a difficult matchup to break down for Thursday night football in terms of fantasy decisions yes. to be made. Yes, some mailbag on the show today, and uh, we want to get you ready to rumble. Give yourself the best odds of winning on Sunday, which uh, I last I checked, there are 10 games in the early window. Mm, that's stupid. So we don't have enough TVs here, Mike. I don't I, – now you're speaking my language. Because <laughs> Jason and I have been pushing for TV number 10 for a while. But Honestly, just, I think this is like, what, the second week it would have mattered? It, on the whole year? There's, there's usually one or two weeks per year. Yeah. But it – Why? What are it, the NFL? Your entire existence, like all you want, is to dominate everything. Like you, ten took, morning, three afternoon, one evening. You took over Christmas weekend. Yeah, with an insane, insane barrage of games, just nonstop football. Because you, it's all about the NFL. And then you're like, no, we'll, we'll do 10 games. We'll just get it over with real quick. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? 10 and 3. Maybe like 8 and 5. Yeah. Still, you can still lopsite it. Just at least 4. Yeah. There should always be 4 afternoon games minimum. We've got a big Thursday game with players that people have been playing. We have a big Saturday night game with the highest over under the week by a lot. That is the uh, Dallas-Detroit Saturday night matchup. Oh, That's going to be great. 53 and a half point over under last I had looked. And uh, then we have the Sunday barrage. No Monday night football, though. No Monday night football. So your fantasy championship will be over. Monday night football is on Saturday night. Yeah. So New Year's Day, you can bask in it. We will. Uh, we don't have a show that day, right? On uh, Monday, no. 
And then Tuesday we'll come in and we'll reflect on how it went. And uh, we'll be, we'll be, you know, this is a year round show. So we'll be getting into the 10 things to remember. We'll be breaking down um, all the lessons from the past year. And uh, the NFL playoffs will be upon us. All right. Couple reminders here at the top before we get into hungry for more. I've got three reminders for the folks out there. The first one. Brand new Dynasty Pod episode this morning. Jason was on that one with Kyle and Matthew Betts. And it is a Dynasty Sink or Swim. Yeah, we talk about a lot of those questionable players. And are they going to sink or swim? You want to know about Stephon Diggs? Yeah, Uh, yeah, sorry. I hear that name now and I just trip. (laughs) Yeah. FootClanGiveaway.com. Still going on. A signed Travis Etienne jersey. A bunch of fantasy footballers swag. It was really fun seeing uh, a handful of videos over on X of people that uh, they were celebrating with some footballer swag on Christmas morning. Uh, some of the That's significant others out there picking up some uh, significant gear. Yeah, thank you. And then fantasychamps.com right now. It's a good time to mention it. A You know, this is where you go and get your swag. Get your league trophy. They have belts. They have rings, and if you use the code free ring through this show, you get a $59 championship ring for free when you buy a trophy. So in our leagues, the winner, they get a ring for themselves, and then they get the trophy, but that gets passed around. Mm -hmm. Check that out at fantasychamps.com, code free ring. Put them both in your cart. Use that code, and you'll get a free ring. You guys ready to move on? Let's go. Mm -hmm. Welcome to Hungry for More, presented by Uber Eats. All right. Getting towards the end of the season. These names, I think, you know, you can't bring up a name in Hungry for More right now without having significant championship week uh, implications. So, Mike... How how are our picks just us trying to will something into existence? Correct. Uh, a little bit. It's also <laughs> both of ours have a, a a bit of a mirror situation where they're good players. Everything should be fine when you play them, but in the there's a sandwich. There's a little blip that that rightfully should give you a little bit of concern. But I'm hungry for more Zay Flowers. I've loved this guy. I mean, was very, very high on Zay Flowers coming into the NFL season. Looked immediately like the number one wide receiver for the Baltimore Ravens, which he was. And But then it was a pretty bumpy ride with Mark Andrews there. And then Mark Andrews goes out. Zay Flowers is, is right back to a target hog. You know, uh, last week against San Francisco, tough defense. He saw three targets in the red zone. He scored. He's had 17 or more fantasy points in three of four games. Three of four, because in the middle of that was an absolute one disaster, a one catch just out of nowhere, seemingly out of nowhere in a very easy uh, uh, on a very easy defense to pass on. And now he gets the Miami Dolphins, who the, the Miami Dolphins are 23rd in schedule adjusted points to wide receivers. 47 point over under a Baltimore favored by about three and a half right now. Big game. That's a and yeah. Also, you can go the narratives of this is huge for the basically whoever wins this game is likely to get the bye week. Like if, if you know what I mean. So both teams are playing, but there was that blip. Yeah, and Miami has been getting better. They're like the Miami defense has been very legit the last couple of weeks. So it's what do you do with Zay Flowers? So we're just I'm. Well, I mean, look at la- Hung- hunger for more of let- let's make sure we actually get those targets and we don't have. How does how does Zay Flowers have a one catch day? How is that possible? And it just happened two weeks ago. Baltimore is an incredible NFL team, but they don't win the same way every week. Correct. And Miami with Jalen Ramsey, Xavier Howard. Like, I know C.D. Lamb had a good game last week because he had the long touchdown. He went like two quarters or two and a half quarters after that without a target in that game. So, 
sometimes Baltimore wins on defense. Sometimes it's Lamar running. Sometimes it's Gus Bus. Sometimes it's, you know, Beckham. Like it, it doesn't repeat. And so there's that fear. But Flowers, 17 plus points in three or four games yeah. should give you some confidence. Look, I'm eight targets, 10 targets, two <clears throat> against the Jacksonville Jaguars, 13 targets. Yeah. Like, so the, the blip sends fear. Oh, yeah. But you're hungry for more of the not yeah. blip. Because as long, as long as Zay Flowers is going to get targets, like if he gets eight or more targets, he'll be a, a he'll be a very solid floor play with upside. You're hungry for more targets. Yeah. And I am as well with my player. I think the targets are the key for a guy who's been on fire. And I'm hungry for more James Conner. Please. <laughs> I'm hungry for more James Conner. Getting passing work. Yeah. This last week was a tough matchup, and we were worried about it. It was the Chicago Bears whose defense has been great. Their run defense has been outstanding. And so they targeted him five times, and he had five receptions. I mean, if you get five receptions as a baseline for a player as good as James Conner, the fantasy output's going to be great. He plays against Philly. Philly is the number two ranked defense on the course of the season of not giving up fantasy points to running backs. So it's like a, a really scary matchup. But you look at the last two weeks and James Conner, I mean, he played against San Francisco. Scary defense. Bad matchup for running backs. Well, he was the running back 11 last week. Scary defense. Bad, you know, bad for running backs against Chicago. He was the running back five. So I know I'm hungry for more. I know Andy is very yeah. well, hungry look, for more James Conner because, he, you know, the running back five, the running back 11, the running back five on 27, 17, and 17 opportunities keep feeding this man. What's crazy is I mentioned this last week with my somewhat optimism about Saquon Barkley. The Philadelphia Eagles' run defense on the year has been dominant, but over the last five weeks, they're the ninth best matchup for running backs. Kenneth and Walker torched them. Yep. Uh, you saw Dallas go seven points above expectation you saw the Giants last week three and a half points above expectation with Saquon so uh, there is a little bit of optimism there for Connor and look it he's the matchups have been bad for Connor for a while and he just keeps getting it done mm -hmm. and then the, the running back I just mentioned is my hungry for more it's Saquon Barkley uh, I'm thrilled they just announced Tyrod Taylor as the starter what you need is some like I just want like bottom third, not dead last in moving the football. If you move the football down the field at all, Saquon's going to have an opportunity. He went 23 for 80 in a touchdown against that Philly defense. Um, he had six targets in that game. The Rams, it's another tough matchup for Saquon Barkley, and he has been, uh, much like Zay Flowers, he has been the, uh, the, the red light, green light. Mm -hmm. He plays great. He has a bad game. Great, bad game. But the fact that Tyrod Taylor is coming These back. These trends continue. You just want to see opportunity inside the 20. It will be the Saquon show. 23 rushing opportunities against Philly is awesome. So I am hungry for more Saquon heading into championship week, uh, and that is, that's my name that I wanted to mention. Yep. That was Hungry for More presented by Uber Eats. Get almost almost anything delivered with Uber Eats. An O-line? Mm, no. 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 Carton of OJ? Yeah. Okay. Delicious. <laughs> Uh, order now on the app. Uh, product availability may vary by region. See the app for details. All right, let's do it. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Spe speaking of OJ, real quick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I have a 15-year-old son. And when you're young, like uh, things like heartburn, that's not like part of your world. Right? right, you just eat like yeah. a pig. It's just a trash compactor. In yeah, there. and you it don't matter, right? You don't deal with heartburn. So, so he, he gets some heartburn from all the Christmas, uh, you know, vacuuming up of the treats, right? Mm -hmm. And so, like, he's never had heartburn really, and and so I give him some tums, and he takes the tums and he starts to feel better, and then and about ten minutes later, he goes, "I'm still feeling it a little bit," and I go, "Well, did you drink some water?" And he goes, "I just had a." tall glass of orange juice <laughs> oh, so he yeah. didn't he didn't know that maybe that Acid. would cause a bit of a, <laughs> let uh, me let me douse this fire with some gasoline yeah I, <laughs> it's I, liquid i didn't know whether to be mad disappointed hey, i didn't i was just like that's a tough lesson i was like buddy you drank some acid you just gotta tell him like 
maybe just have some more, you know? Yeah, just- I'm like, I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> so, um, wow. Also going back uh, uh, to where we were beforehand, you were talking about the Rams as a tough defense against yes. Saquon. You're hungry for more Saquon. I, I just looked it up because I know the Rams have been a tough matchup. Yeah. They are they are the the absolute most difficult matchup for all running backs over the last six weeks. Over the last three weeks, they Yeah, have, they, they ruined Camara last week. They ruined Camara. We're talking not like three points below expectation. Ten points below expectation. Two weeks ago, ten points below expectation. Three weeks ago, 12 points below expectation. They are shutting down the running backs. My narrative for why Camara could do well was because they played – you know, Washington without Brian Robinson and the Cardinals without Connor and Cleveland without a running back. And, well, it didn't matter. They shut down Kamara. The nice thing is, if it counts for anything, Giants are at home. So That's fair. Most of the uh, three of those five matches were, were in L.A. But, yeah, it's not great. No. Good luck to you, laddie. <laughs> All right. C.J. Stroud's concussion symptoms. Getting into the news here. Uh, have subsided. He is set to resume activities this week. I had somebody message me on Twitter. They said, oh, your rankings, they have C.J. Stroud and Justin Fields really close. I said, look, if it's me, I'm just going to play Justin Fields. Uh, I know C.J. Stroud's at home. I know that they have an opportunity against Tennessee, and I don't. Bl- you guys might have a completely different opinion. It just makes me fearful. No Tank Dell coming back from the concussion, seeing some blips on C.J. Stroud's resume of late. I just play Justin Fields and roll with that, assuming DJ Moore is there. If DJ Moore was out, maybe that changes the equation. Yeah, I mean, if you look at what he did before getting concussed, it really wasn't that great for fantasy purposes. Yes, he had the 41-point monstrous week in Week 9, and he had a 30-point week in Week 12. Like, So he's got a ceiling, but he also had a 16-point week, a 15-point week, a 12-point week in that same stretch since the bye week. So he's not like a locked-in guaranteed oh man I get CJ Stroud back so my opponent's got to be super scared um Stroud is a is a decent play this week at home or I'm sorry against Tennessee it is at home oh yeah at home against Tennessee that's a good that's a good matchup I'm fine playing him um big news for Nico to have him back that's I'm more happy for the other pieces no brown goose again so he would be the he'd be a dance with the devil on championship week but I would dance I would dance with Noah Brown. I'll I dance would. with that devil. I'll dance with that devil. <laughs> Noah Brown should be a good play this week. I'm not afraid. I mean, that look, you have been the courageous one. You mentioned Noah Brown the one week of the last four that he didn't goose. Yeah. But, uh, He's not goosing this week. Well, it's Dalton, Dalton Schultz was back and had a yeah. bunch of targets. Six targets for Robert Woods, Nico Collins. I don't think I'm starting him. Um, TJ Hawkinson out for the season. Torn MCL, ACL. The number two tight end is gone, and it's late season injury, so you you just hope he's back and healthy to start the year. He almost certainly won't be. um, Because of the timeline being this late, uh, both ACL and MCL tears, you're going to wait to have surgery until swelling goes down. So it'll be a couple weeks before he has surgery. I think there's a um, a really solid chance that you don't have him to start the season. The Vikings still haven't decided which of their three quarterbacks to start. Do you have – let's say you had Justin Jefferson. Oh, yeah, you know who you want. You want Mullins. Oh, oh 1 a yeah. million percent. Yes. Every fantasy football manager out there is praying for Mullins. And right now that's where I lean. I, th- I think it will be I, Mullins, yeah. but um, TBD and, and – um, you know, th- there, there's, there's some coaches that are, um, very, you know, restrictive and, oh, we're not going to tell you what's going on. And there's some coaches that are just really honest and, and, and open. Kevin O'Connell is a pretty straight shooter. He, when he knows he'll tell you, um, I really believe that he's still figuring it out. Well, the K.J. Osborne question is the one for me. Like, I'm picking him up in a couple of leagues where I have, like, Josh Downs or Curtis Samuel. Like, I want to play Osborne, but I don't want to play him with Jaron Hall, and I don't want to play him with Joshua Dobbs. Right. So I am hoping for Mullins myself, and that would make that decision for me. Mike Tomlin implied Mason Rudolph will start again in Week 17. 
Okay. How do you feel about that, Mike? How do you feel about Mason Rudolph's performance? I, I mean, he balled out. Well, he had a he had some really big plays to George Pickens against the Bengals. We'll we'll see. Doug Peterson said Trevor Lawrence right shoulder injury is an AC joint sprain. He's progressing. This would be the third straight week that he's progressing with an injury that we don't think he'll play. And I, guess what? I think he'll play. <laughs> they need him to play. He played after the concussion. He played after the ankle. He's probably going to play after the shoulder. But we'll see. Yeah, Does this, it change how you'd start Ridley? Yeah, I mean, well, obviously if Lawrence isn't there, I would be hesitant to start uh, Ridley. I, I think there's a decent chance he does not play. Um, so we'll really have to monitor this one. I, yeah, he's been he's been he's been beat bad. Up, um, yeah, and, and hasn't been performing Beathard well. Provided some fantasy value for Ridley last this week. Thing, like the, the last and it's Carolina. The last three weeks, he is completing fifty-seven percent of his passes. Yeah, That's Carolina's he's literally a, screaming in pain after every play. I yeah, I'm, look, I'm not I'm not saying I, I I could do any better with those injuries, but took Zay Jones and Kirk away and then just broke most of his body. Yeah, yep. uh, Carolina is a terrible matchup for wide receivers for quarterbacks, so I'm I'm not really looking forward to um, that matchup. Uh, Etn, I mean, especially if you've got a banged up Trevor Lawrence, Ingram? Etn should be the, the yeah Ingram should be okay and and Etn should be great. Will Levis will try to practice on Wednesday. Will Levis would give you moderate flex hope for DeAndre Hopkins, where there is none in Tannehill. Jacoby Brissett will start. Um, hey, where's the beef? <laughs> J- Jacoby, where's the beef, Brissett? He's back. It's good. Yes. It's good for McLaurin. It's yeah. good for Dotson. I mean, throw last week out. They played the Jets. But, you know, he played a limited amount of time in that game, went 10 for 13, threw, you know, another touchdown. It's good for the – I mean, his passer rating – has been great the last two weeks. Yeah, I mean, it's still a, 140. Still a tough uh, defense. He's playing against San Francisco, but they're at home. Um, it, it puts Terry McLaurin into the startable category. Tyra Taylor, I mentioned that he'll start against the Rams at home. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Quick break. Back with the difficult Thursday night preview. It'll all be fine. <laughs> It'll all be fine. This will be a super easy breakdown. Lots of confidence from my friends in this one. Let's do it. Thursday night breakdown. You think we're ever going to get to the point where, like, the, uh, you know, the medical associations, they come out and they say, we do not recommend men over 60 to play fantasy football. <laughs> men with high blood pressure. Men with heart conditions, like, is that going to be, is this the next smoking? I don't think oh. they will do that because they themselves play fantasy football. Uh, you just, that's true. You got to exercise. And then when people are like, well, why, why do you do it? Why are you out there busting your butt? And you're like, well, because I want to play fantasy football. Oh, that's the reason. Yeah. So I, you got to get the heart most, strong. Most of Sunday on my, on my Peloton. Is that what you're telling me? No. Because if you combine oh, oh, not at the yeah. same time, if no. you exercise while tilting your face off, you just you you will spontaneously combust. He died as he lived. Tuesday, Wednesday, prepare your body yeah. on the Peloton. Just sleep through the games. Uh, all right, New York six and nine, taking on the Cleveland Browns ten and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Cleveland minus seven and a half at home. The over under is thirty five. That gives the Jets thirteen points. So Man. let's start with the easy decisions. The Cleveland defense. Oh, yeah, they're in. We know that nice. uh, Trevor Simeon's going to be back. Yeah, Zach Wilson has been ruled out. This is uh, – so the Cleveland defense. Man, this game is going to be wild. Um, the Cleveland defense is a lock. The The Browns can't run the ball. They have really struggled running, and they're throwing it like crazy with Flacco. Obviously, mostly to Amari Cooper, forty game. plus every yeah. time. But you cannot throw on the Jets. You just can't do it. They are they give up one hundred sixty eight a week passing a, yards. A statuesque pocket passer in Joe Flacco trying to just air it out on the Jets. It ain't going to work. It's just not going to work. I can't imagine 
him picking apart this Jets secondary. I can um, imagine this Jets secondary picking him off and maybe short field situation for Brees. Yeah, I, I mean, genuinely, I, I think Brees is okay because of that. I mean, you're going to start Brees no matter what. Uh, you just you have to have the the upside play. It's not a great. I mean, these are two good defenses. I would start the Jets defense as well. Um, I think that they're they're okay now. The the Browns being favored by seven and a half, being implied for over twenty points. Maybe I'm more scared than I should be of the Jets there, defense. There were people on Twitter, and maybe they're just angry Jets fans. They they said, please stop hyping up the Jets defense. They're like, it's awful. They just, you know, they gave up a 20, 28 points in the second half to Washington. And while I understand the emotion behind that, the math says they're the very best against quarterbacks and wide receivers, mm -hmm. and not by a little bit, by a lot. And so it is a really well, tough they, situation. And when they give up those points, I mean, they, they gave it all up really quickly, like when they stopped playing football. They, they literally – they literally took their players out of the game. And then because there was like 27-7 to 7 towards the end of the game and they're benching their guys, and then they were, whoops, we, we did that too early. Here's one other guaranteed start is David Njoku. David Njoku, I just looked this up. This is not a small sample, guys. This is from week 7 through 16, so 10 full games. He's on pace for 160 targets, 95 receptions, 1,000 yards, and ten and a half touchdowns in that span. He has not had. He's had one week outside the top twelve at the position. I can see a ton of tight end screens, mm -hmm. short area Najoku targets. Throw it right, right in front of you in the middle of the field and let Najoku take a big hit. Yeah, I mean this is he's on one hundred seventy five target pace uh, over the last six weeks, so he's going to be targeted and he is comfortable and fine. And what about and, the you got? Uh, Revenge game stack. No? With, with Joe Flacco? Joe, Joe Flacco and Elijah Moore. I mean, these are... Well, Elijah Moore's challenge is he can't catch the football. I understand, but he's going to be extra angry. Yeah, I mean, he will run around. I couldn't stand watching last week and watching Elijah Moore because the, the few targets that he received were disgusting because of him. Yeah. The... And so, yeah, he is, uh, you know, the Joe Flacco against the Jets... Narrative, 21 points. I mean, it's they can't run the football. Do you think they get to 21 points? That's the question. The Browns? Yeah. I, I, I think they do. I think this game could hit the over, but not based on the offenses. Right. Um, I think that both of these defenses score a touchdown in this game. Um, and then and then you will have some – you know, uh, Amari Cooper is the biggest question because people the who have Amari outs, Cooper, yeah. how do you possibly sit him? off of the biggest performance of the entire year where he balled out and was amazing. How could you sit him? Right now I've got him as my wide receiver 24. So if you're in the championship game and you've got Amari Cooper, you probably have – I mean, you're in the championship game. You've got a good roster. You might have other – you might have three other top 24 wide receivers this week where there's the potential to look at saying, man, I could see how this game goes very poorly and, and sit him down. But I, I think the majority of people, you just, you're not going to be able to sit Amari Cooper. You're going to hope that he's hyper targeted. Mike, he you just, brought up he could he could get a big play. You know, he's getting targeted down the field. It just takes one 60 yard catch to make you happy enough in this game. And obviously, around the end zone, he's been looked at a lot. Do you go? What about Garrett Wilson on the other side versus Amari Cooper? Oh, there's no way I would not play Cooper. Without a doubt, Cooper over Garrett Wilson. Okay. Garrett Wilson to me is someone that. Uh, I would prefer to bench this week. You've got a He's averaging ten targets a game. Mm hmm. But on the road against Cleveland without Zach Wilson, Garrett Wilson is. I mean, his last two road games he finished uh, with negative points and with four points against Miami, and it, it's tough because uh, it's just not a lot of points available to Trevor Simeon. I was wrong. I mean, last week he was he was good. But I play Amari Cooper. I play the the favorite. I play the guy that's leading the league in reception yards over the last six weeks. So, like as of right now, you know, just so for some personal anecdotes, I am currently leaning on. I will be playing Zay Flowers over Garrett Wilson. 
Uh, I haven't locked that decision in. I mean, the clock is obviously ticking here with the Thursday night matchup, but so just that's my headspace of where I am with with uh, Garrett Wilson. Yeah, the but uh, I'm, I'm playing Cooper. I'm I'm getting it. I'm I'm putting him in. And then, it's a good discussion. I know Brooks Brooks is chiming in saying, "Look, it's how you play fantasy. I could never live with Bench and Cooper." That's I get it. I think the discussion's important though, because if you just stay stuck in the mud on these matchups, like you know, there have been. Saquon weeks where it was probably worth benching him, but I, you know, I didn't have the courage to do it right. because you stick with that player. I, I think you probably are staying in the flames here, but that then that has to, you know, if if Najoku's good, if Cooper's good, everybody that I've talked to is benching Joe Flacco this. That's week. that's where I was going to go. The conversation of do you the play, number one quarterback from last? Do week. you play Joe Flacco or do you go with? You know, we brought up some what I think are the the process anyways has some good streamers of like Derek Carr. Gets to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I would play Derek Carr. Baker Mayfield gets to play the Saints. I would play Baker. And probably again without Lattimore. So if you have a if you have Mike Evans, congratulations. You don't probably don't have to deal with that. Um, I'd play Kyler. I'd play Russell Wilson. I I you know if 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 there's a, a a good enough option, I I would play those over Flacco this week. Geno Smith against Pittsburgh. I'd play Geno. Gardner Minshew against Las Vegas. I've got them back to back in my rankings. I'm okay going Flacco. I, I think I would go one. Flacco there. They have been on fire. That is that is fair. And and the Jets, you know, their defense has had to fight tooth and nail all year long, and they're not playing for anything anymore. So it would be interesting if the game got away from them. What happens to their defense? Uh, it's a tough one. It's going to be. I mean, it's a game with a 35 point over under to start your championship week. With players that you've been playing every week, like I, here's what I here's what I'll say. I don't think you get through this game where Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Amari Cooper, David Njoku, all those guys have good weeks. I don't think that happens. Or I all think, of them having bad weeks. I don't think that happens either. You're going to have a handful of guys you're happy with and mostly sad. <laughs> the tight end one in fantasy since week seven, David Njoku, dude. Tight end number one. It's about freaking time. Right, Cleveland. I don't know what you've been doing. I mean, how long is, this- I mean, the Ingram Najoku stories of their career are comical. Yeah, this was five years ago. You were drafted, and these guys were first round picks. They were supposed this is to year, be superstars. This is year seven. The three of those For guys: Najoku, uh, Evan Ingram, and OJ Howard. Yeah, yep. they were. You know, number one since week seven. Number five on the year. Already at 115 targets in this offense. And uh, career high in touches. Did you say this is year seven? Yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. I said five years. Wow, year seven. Yeah. Just wait for the year seven breakout, everyone. <laughs> it's, it's dynasty players out there, pull your hair out because not only was Najoku drafted, Ingram drafted in dynasty leagues to be great, and then you went through the mire and you, you know, your soul died, and then you traded them away, but then now you're watching across the league and somebody else has them and they're delivering for them. Yeah, it's ridiculous it took him this long. But, hey, we're here now. It's great. It's great. I, I, I'm I, very, very happy that I, stu- I snuck him into trades at the deadline. And, Mike, you know, we talked about the schedule. It just lined up for mm-hmm. Njoku as well. He's 27 still. Yeah, he, he, he was he too young. The, he came into the league as a baby monster. I mean, he was <laughs> the biggest manned <laughs> young I mean, he, he was just too young. He was too young for the NFL. Right. Kyle Pitts, just 23. Are we waiting for his year seven? Yeah. We're we're, we're in year three. Three of, Yeah, we yeah. got we got a ways to go. For sure. Pitts. <laughs> Four more years. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. Anything else from this game you want to discuss? I think a lot of people have been asking on the website, number four, in terms of start-sit questions in the Week 17 rankings, has been whether you play the Jets defense on the road Thursday night against the Browns who have been cruising or you pivot to somebody else like Chicago against Atlanta, the Rams against the Giants, uh, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders who've been on fire against Indianapolis. Like I, me personally, I play those three defenses. I play them all over the Jets. Really? I would. Hmm. That's, that's, that's tough. The, the I mean, nice... you got seven point, seven and a half point favorites here. I'd... Flacco's thrown five interceptions in the last two weeks. I know he's been great for fantasy and he's been winning ball games, but like how you score in 
fantasy, you know, the, the interception is the, the yeah, highest. Yeah, the pass rush and the interception. It's yeah. the highest odds to a touchdown, right? And so is is the is the pick. And I think Flacco throws at least two picks in this game. So uh, I still lean the Jets. Okay. Over all those? Over the the Rams against the Giants? Yeah, I don't uh, – Tyrod – Just play the better defense? I think so. I okay. mean, that's that's where I lean. They're, these are all good options, um, but I'm going to – you know, it, especially since it's that close, let me let me know how my defense does on Thursday, get a head start on the week if I need to make pivot options with more knowledge getting it's ahead good, on point. championship week. Yeah, that's a good point. It, it'll be an interesting game. Let's do some championship week mailbag. Bag. Bag, oh, bag, All right, here we go. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com, click the submit a question button, or dial the voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. Jumping into a voicemail question. Here we go, and it is a funny one. Hey, ballers. Do I dare start uh, David Njoku over Stefan Diggs this week? Oh, Somehow made the no. championship. Thanks. Let me know. Oh my gosh. Yes. Do you yes. dare? Yes, you oh do. My I would. <laughs> I would do that. So Stefan Diggs gets the Patriots. I would do it too. <laughs> what an insane Yeah. Question. David Najoku. Yeah. Six year bust tight end. Yeah. Versus superstar, uh, we need to shut this year down, man. Josh, <laughs> this year is <laughs> drunk. Can I can I make a secondary uh, decision for you? How about David Njoku or Austin Eckler this week? I would go Eckler there. I think <sighs> Eckler's actually a good play. He, I, I know it. I know it's crazy, but it, it, he Eck, worked his way into double digit points. He had double digit points. Was bad. last week. Nineteen opportunities, and he plays against Denver, and Denver's defense has been better. Uh, you know, yeah, but you but against him. the run, that's that's where they get beat. So Diggs or Njoku, Mike? <laughs> I oh my god! His last five game, his last four games against the Patriots: seven for eighty-five and a touchdown, seven for ninety-two and a touchdown, seven for one hundred four and a touchdown, six for fifty-eight and a touchdown. But that was I know you're not reading Diggs. I mean that's yeah yeah I so because Diggs's last couple games is five for twenty-nine and no touchdown. Well, four. Th th that was Diggs against New England. The last four matches oh. against New England. Oh, he's dominated them. But this is not the same Stephon Diggs right now. No, it's not. And and, and it, they it shut has down. coincided so, with the okay. change of offensive coordinator too. And the change in yeah the running. Amari philosophy. Cooper or Stephon Diggs. Cooper. <laughs> Jason. <laughs> Jason, just I mean, plunging like, his head you into do, his microphone. You got to do your fantasy algebra here. If you're going to start Najoku over. Stephon Diggs, you would certainly start Amari Cooper. Yeah. There's no way I'm going to live in the betting on Diggs revival after the amount of weeks that it has happened. I'm not going to do that. That's a good point. It's, it's a good point, number, Mike. It's the number Are you playing Cooper over Diggs? Yes. Yeah, I got to move Diggs down yeah, in the ranking. I was just thinking oh the same thing. Oh, my gosh. Thing. All right. Yeah, and I think you do. I think you – I think you flex the tight end, which is redonkulous. Do you guys want to quit the show? Is it a the... little bit? Yeah, just for just for this season. Where is Diggs in the rankings right now? I have I'm moving him down. I have him around sixteen to twenty. Yeah, I just bumped into twenty. Yeah, he's at. Uh... Yeah, I'm looking at guys that, you know, this like question is, Zay Flowers, Nico Collins. Loyalty pays no dividends. Points are what win yeah. championships. I, 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 There's a handful of these guys that I would rather play over Stephon Diggs at this point. I mean, he's not someone that, you know, is incapable. He he still looked all right to me on it the field. Makes no they just sense. Been miss, they've been missing on some stuff. Well, there's a couple of things. We talked about this on the Dynasty show, but they're not targeting him deep as much. They're not connecting deep as much, and the the way that he is being used since the coordinator change, and the way that the team is operating since the coordinator change, puts him in a less valuable situation. He had a deep target that should have been about a seventy-five yard touchdown last week. That 
Josh Allen underthrew it. It was a pick. They did take the shot. And uh, what's crazy is they've won games. Four of the last five games they've won. 32 points, 20 points, 31 points, 24 points. All four of those games, Stephon Diggs, 57, 58, 46, 66 in fantasy finish. So it is um, – And yet a 22% target share, 31, 38, 38. The last two weeks he has seen 38% of I don't the This is what I'm you talking about. You don't bench about. him at no – you don't bench him over everybody. Right. Okay. You yeah, just, you, you, you can still find value there. It's just a matter of whether or not the Buffalo Bills are going to need to throw the ball a lot. You know, 38% of a team that has decided against the Cowboys to just run the ball every single play and succeed and win the game that way, um, it, you know, it, it you could have 60% of a bad pie I am and not very, be happy. I'm very happy that they're at home this week against New England. Um, but, like, I mean, you start to make decisions about Stephon Diggs or Rashi Rice, Stephon Diggs or I would go Rice. Mike Evans. I would go Mike, Mike Evans. Evans. Uh, Stephon Diggs or Brandon Ayuk. I don't. That's a fair question. You I would know, go Ayuk I think a Washington, Washington game. Yeah, I mean, uh, Devontae Adams or Stephon Diggs. Devontae Adams plays Indy. I, oh. I mean, that's a good matchup. Yeah, his quarterback isn't it a is, good matchup for wide receivers? Uh, it's, it's, av it's average. I, I think it's a much Diggs. better matchup for running backs. I'm gonna play Diggs over Adams. Mm. I mean, outside wideouts dominate Indianapolis. That's what Kyle is reminding us. <laughs> well, yeah, I will remind you. The Raiders had no passing no, yards I, in I, three quarters. Look, it, it, yeah, I understand that. <laughs> I'll take 38 percent of Josh Allen's targets. But we can't be so biased to one week that they scored 63 know, points where. Trey Tucker, Jacoby Myers, Devontae yes. Adams, all and Michael Mayer all dominated a week prior. So it's I'm not saying one way or the other. I'm just lay, laying it out. Yep. Uh, all right, another voicemail. Hey, footballers. Steve from Phoenix here. Um, got a tough one. I'm in the finals in my league, and I can't decide between Joe Mixon or Ty Chandler. Really hard one. Hope you guys are having a good day. Bye. Whew. I don't feel great about Ty Chandler this week. I'm just going to throw that out really? there. Really? No, I don't. I obviously Madison's going to get worked in more than he was last week, coming off of the injury. Ty Chandler really inefficient. I I know it's the Packers matchup. There's opportunity there. I'm not saying Chandler can't deliver. I am curious where you both are with Ty Chandler, Mike. You have a start sit decision with him. Yeah. So the the Packers right now over the last five weeks have been the sixth best matchup over expectation, and Oh, wait, who's, oh, the Chiefs. Let me find them real quick. Uh, the Chiefs over the last five weeks have been right behind the the Packers. So not a tough matchup in terms of giving up points above your ex expected points. Yeah, this this is – Eight attempts last week. This is a volume play to me. Um, Ty which Chandler, is Mixon? Which is Mixon, yeah. yeah. I, uh, the matchups are similar enough. One isn't great and one is terrible um, where I, I don't know – I think Ty Chandler is a decent play this week. I'm not anti Chandler. Without Hawkinson, without Addison, they're going to need to run the ball more, and so I think Chandler's okay. But he could end up with seven or eight carries in the game, and Madison worked in more. I mean, we just don't know how the game plan will work. We don't even know what quarterback it's going to be. Whereas, at least with Mixon, we've seen him have a lot of success with Jake Browning get a ton of work so i i'm going to i'm going to lean on the volume all right this is a good question from Braxton well hold on here breaking news what do you got for us this is from rap sheets so oh ian rapaport the broncos are strongly considering having quarterback russell wilson sit for the final two games preserving financial flexibility for the off season. Wilson has yeah, 37 baby. mil in 2025 salary that vests in March of 2024 if he suffered a serious injury. It would complicate matters. Yeah, they're eliminated now. So I don't think that those two guys get along. I don't Yoinks. think that's the future. It's the, this. It's the I'm right. I'm done move. with this season. Mike is I'm retiring. Done. I'm out of here from 2023. <laughs> wow. Don't worry. The calendar turns over. Mike is 2024. Uh, is that soon. Jared Stidham? You betcha. <laughs> yeah, baby. Ironically, Jared Stidham 
was who took over for Carr when they benched Carr in the exact oh same situation gosh. last year. Jared yes. Stidham. You, you want to know who? Is it, it is you Stidham, wanna know right? Who, yeah, yeah, I believe so. Look look that up. You want to know who's alerting these general managers about the contract tolling? Jared is it Stidham? Stidham? <laughs> Jared Stidham's agent. Jared Stidham's agent is calling these general managers. He's going, like, hey, I've hey, reviewed hey. the contracts. Look, now that you're out of it, you need to be aware of what's going to happen if Russ goes out there and gets injured. <laughs> that is too funny. <laughs> Stidham is his mind and his P's oh, and Q's. Yeah, the contract is. What's, what's, what's great is one of my uh, one of my championship <laughs> leagues that I'm in. It's a best ball, oh super gosh. flex. I got Stidham on the roster, baby. Nice. Sit hey. him down. Sit Rust down. Sit him for Stidham. Yeah, nice. Also, I mean, it, with Cort we'll see if Cortland Sutton plays. But thank that's, goodness, that's brutal. Well, it's brutal, but it's also thank goodness. There's who plays there's them this real week? No. Fantasy options. What's the dim? Is it uh, the Chargers? Uh, yeah, yeah, Chargers yeah, it is. at Denver. What's I mean? If you have no Cortland Sutton, you have no Russell Wilson. Bet the under. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess you would never play the Chargers Against defense. Easton but I, oh, Stick. The, well done, Jarrett. You figured out. <laughs> sit him for sit him. This, that's the campaign every year. He needs season, to find. That's what he's doing. He's finding quarterbacks contracts. that he knows at the end of the year. That's the team he goes to that yeah. year. Genius. All right, this is our final question here. It's a good one from Braxton because a lot of you are in this situation. Like, Mike, uh, I'm playing against a juggernaut in the championship. That would be that would be me. Mike, you're playing me. I'm the, yep. ju I'm the juggernaut. Oh, I, I, yep. What are the tips you have when you're overmatched? Do you play a player like Kyler over Stafford? Stafford's been a low-ceiling option this year. Uh, do you play – upside type of uh options like a Darius Slayton over a Wandale or a yeah, I mean, that's I mean, a bad example but like a, a you know somebody who would do you sit Cooper because you don't think a ceiling game exists and play someone like Devontae Adams where maybe a ceiling game does exist I, I think you're you're definitely looking for more ceiling more explosiveness high upside it's the type of matchup where you can Get yourself to play a Gabe Davis, someone that can have a seventy-yard touchdown, even though George Pickens he could really hurt you. You know who has the explosiveness in the matchup. I would also try, if you can, um, to stack. You know, if you're, you know, if you've got um, the decision between Stafford and and Kyler, and you think, oh, Stafford hasn't really had upside. Kyler has the upside. Well, if if you've got Puka. Or or Cooper Cup or some or you've got Trey McBride, play the one that matches your quarterback because if that player gets the touchdowns, it's it's a powerful tool. That's good advice. The yeah, stack need, is powerful. You need touchdowns, and is what you need. Focus on touchdowns with your DST. Mm -hmm. uh, look at who's going to throw picks and try to get. I mean, th those are you want to beat a juggernaut. You end up with 15 points from your defense you know that that's the, the put work into that I, I played uh i was in several playoffs and in two of them i faced the raiders defense on their 24 point week and i was eliminated in both of those and i was a favorite in both so you're it's a good point if you get an overwhelming defensive performance that is that is massive so um that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast tomorrow we'll dig into the matchup starts of the week and get that going for championship Sunday, pretty much. I mean, it's going to be a big week. Um, a reminder, you can head over to jointhefoot.com if you'd like to support this podcast. If we have been bringing you entertainment, advice, uh, anything you appreciate, check out the community of 30,000 strong, more than that, actually. Uh, you get access to all of the Discord channels premium tools and resources, extra episodes during the off season when we drop down to two regular shows a week. And um, you get to hang out with the best people on earth. So yeah. uh, join the foot.com. Quick update Jeremy found. So Denver, if they win, they actually will maintain a 12% chance to get into the playoffs. So essentially eliminated, but not totally. Okay. You, is it a 12% chance to lose $37 million? Is that worth it? That's the question that Sean Payton and company will have to decide. Maybe he's made up his mind on Russell Wilson already. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more about that and all the matchups. Take care, Foot Clan. Goodbye.
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.